Two things are happening with the Air Force right now that may seem slightly disconnected, but in reality they are signaling a firm shift in priorities. The first is that the F-22 Raptor, an air dominance fighter jet designed to overmatch anything the Soviet Union could put in the air, has moved slightly back from the slow retirement that was in the works towards a most likely costly yet needed life extension. The other thing that's happening is that Congress seems to be finally crumbling down to resistance to the idea that the A-10 may be on its last legs. The venerable warthog like the Raptor was designed with the Soviets in mind, and during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, it showed itself to be a worthy close air support platform, as long as there wasn't any advanced air defense to worry about. And therein lies the crucial difference, however obvious to most observers, that between the two aircraft that are designed to do two very different things, the F-22 can fight and survive decades after it was conceived. The concept of low observability turned out to be a future-proofed idea that is paying dividends now that China is engaging in a massive military buildup. The A-10 predates stealth as a design consideration. It was made to take damage, deal it back, and loiter at low and medium altitudes to support ground operations. During the first Gulf War, the Warthog gained a reputation for toughness, but even with US air superiority, dozens of Warthogs sustained damage and five were destroyed in the conflict. During OIF, the A-10 was largely absent until the A-10C modernization program was completed. In Afghanistan, the A-10 found most likely a perfect environment for its capability set. Early in the campaign, it was able to base in rougher airfields, such as Bagram, which had just changed ownership, and the lack of Taliban air defenses meant it could really do the close part in close air support. But let's fast forward to today. In Ukraine, we've seen a complex scenario where air superiority is constantly contested, especially near the front lines. The Russian equivalent of the A-10, the Su-25 Frogfoot, has found it to be a less than ideal operating environment. The Frogfoot is flown by both Ukraine and Russia, and losses seem to be around more than 50 aircraft between the two sides. Videos of some Su-25 tactics include a nap of the earth approach followed by arcing unguided rockets towards enemy lines before retreating out of the envelope of enemy air defenses. Not exactly the most effective use of a well-trained pilot that cost a lot of money to train. The Taiwan Strait seems like an even worse place for a slow aircraft that isn't low observable. Thankfully, the nostalgia and fanboy attitudes of global war on terror vets are starting to run out of steam with those in power. Members of Congress have an interest in keeping expensive weapons platforms going in the states they represent. So the Warthog has had an artificial lease on life in part because it helps keep bases keep jobs and jobs on bases in certain districts. Congress finally relented in 2023 and let the Air Force retire some A-10s, and that trend is continuing in 2024, despite constant complaints from state officials whose districts are losing out. The U.S. is trying to use the limited funds allocated to defense to keep up with the Chinese military buildup. In peacetime, it doesn't matter as much if you have a jobs program masquerading as an essential defensive system. That's just politics. But now we're in a race to create deterrence, and each penny counts a bit more than it used to. Which leads me to the F-22. It never made a ton of sense to divest the F-22 quickly unless there was an operational placement waiting in the wings. The F-35 is a capable fighter, but the Raptor has some strengths that the Lightning II can't match. The Raptor's short legs have always been a concern for Pacific operations. But with the possibility of stealthy fuel tanks and a sensor enhancement upgrade, the F-22 could help deter a hot war in the South China Sea. It won't be cheap to keep the limited number of F-22s in service. We're talking billions of dollars. The Raptor at this point is an older airframe, especially considering the kind of stresses experienced for each hour in the air. But unlike the A-10 and its cracking wings, when thinking about the F-22 tossing beyond visual range missiles at advanced Chinese fighters, it doesn't seem too hard to see why you'd want to hold onto that ability for the foreseeable future. And for the most part, the Air Force won't want to part ways with the Raptor until the NGAD is online and ready for action. The NGAD, or Next Generation Air Dominance Platform, sounds pretty cool. A system of systems that can possibly be optionally manned and capable of operating with other uncrewed platforms. But even with digital development tools and a very different knowledge set than when the service embarked on the advanced tactical fighter program that gave us the F-22, it's possible that it could take longer to have a true F-22 replacement than most realize. All of this is to say why keeping the F-22 in the cupboard is just a prudent move in uncertain times.